Welcome everybody to Self Storage Income. And today we are going to open the books a little, show you guys our numbers on our assets and what's been happening. There, we, we, we compiled some interesting data and uh, I'm actually gonna walk you through all of our assets that we have investors in. We are gonna look at a few things. So as everybody knows, 2023 sucked. <laughs> and it was a hard, hard year in storage. It was a hard year for us. The market change was astronomical and it was rapid and it deteriorated quickly last year. And it really put us to the test as well as it did everybody's. And when we look at our deals, how we buy and what we're doing, a lot of times you guys have heard me talk about my margin of stupidity. That's a real thing and it's for markets like this. I need to be able to make mistakes. The margin of stupidity is placed on a structural basis that allows us to do stupid things without getting caught by value traps. And for those of you that uh, are regular listeners, you know what a value trap is. We have intrinsic and extrinsic value. Extrinsic value is the price and a value trap is when the price kicks in to dictate the outcome, meaning refinance, selling, or anything else where they take the price of the asset. Why? Because the price of the asset doesn't necessarily correlate with the performance of the asset. Now, I, I know you're sitting here going, what, that doesn't make any sense. But when you look at market conditions, think of home prices or anything else, I may be making $100,000 a year off a facility and the debt markets crashed. So all of a sudden, that facility that was worth a million dollars is now only worth 1.5, let's say. That can happen, even though it's still doing the exact same thing, nothing changed at all. Because the extrinsic value, the price from sellers, right? Buyers, excuse me, in the marketplace has changed, supply, demand. Now, we want to avoid those things and the margin of stupidity is supposed to help us avoid those kind of things. So we always structure on the downside. I'm really looking at um, short term traps, things that can happen to hurt us. Now that is what protects us a lot. Also, we do this because I cannot control certain things, right? I know it's crazy, I wish I could. Uh, but uh, when we look at the things that we can change, that's where we wanna put our, um, all our time and attention on. What we do though, is we say we can change these things and it, just how much time will it take us to change those? We have measurable value. We're gonna move uh, move along here because that's an important basis to understand what me and Connor are about to show you guys. And what we're showing is, I look at performance on our assets in a couple ways. First of all, we have the plan. Now, anybody that invested two years ago, whatever your plan was, it's not anymore. <laughs> so that that's gone, yeah. right? That that That's changed. This happens, that's okay. We need to change and adapt. So the first thing we look at is performance according to the plan. When performance according to the plan doesn't go according to plan and it's due to our fault, I'm upset. That ticks me off, I'm pissed. If it doesn't go according to plan due to market driven things, I am active, I'm proactive. We're adjusting and changing the plan. This year, we've been getting ready to roll out essentially new plans and business plans on all of our assets. Because what happened was we got the busy season to come in. We see all the numbers coming in from the third quarter so we can actually see the slow season and the busy season in this changing market, what that means, what it tells us, and we can set a course for all those assets in the new climate. Now. You may say, well, you shouldn't need to change your plan or you shouldn't change your plan. And that's great, that's just stupid because you don't control the conditions, people. Yeah, no, you can, don't change the plan and don't change the, the, the vision, right? The goal. Yeah, like the goal, the vision, go. yeah, How exactly. you get there. Yeah, the, the plan is always going to change. There's no doubt yes. about it. And we adjust predicated on the market. People that adjust are people that not only survive, they thrive. Because also in times like this, you're not just changing your plan because of downsides, but you're also changing your plan because of upsides. 
And that's why we change. We want to protect against downsides that didn't exist and upsides that didn't exist either, right? So we try to maximize those times and then as times change, we can leverage them and build upon them. Once again, we're just not in control of the time frame in which those happen. All right, everybody, the numbers that we're showing, the next thing, and this is where the numbers come in, that I look at and try to understand performance. The market compared to us. So in self-storage, as well as a lot of commercial assets, it is hyper-local. So what I did on our assets, I said, we take a two-year basis and we say, what was the change in market rates? So what did the market do? So what happened in the marketplace versus what happened with us? Now, it's not as easy as comparing rates. The reason being is there is a difference between how we manage revenue and rates. So just because a rate is one thing doesn't mean it'll end up being that thing when we do. So we compare that by revenue. That's the ultimate goal and achievement of success for us. So if the markets are tumbling, but we are improving and making more money, that's a good spread. If the markets are tumbling and we are as well and our revenue's dropping, that's bad because we're correlated to the market. What that tells me is that we're not doing good, right? We are only subject to the market, meaning that are we being successful or is the market making us successful? This is something that I've looked at so much. And it's one of the reasons why I, I tell people we are not storage investors. We own a storage business. We're in the business of storage. They're not the same, right? So when we look at this, let's break down into the numbers now. Okay, we got all our facilities here. And uh, the first thing we look at is it's the changes are taken off the exact same time frame. And what we look at is the market change in rents versus our revenue change. And then I'm keying in to the spread. Now, the other thing that we look at as well is interest rates. Now, the one thing that needs to be taken out of this would be fill up, okay? Meaning that if your revenue rises, but that's just because you had empty spaces and you got more into it, that's not showing a performance necessarily in comparison of the market rates and performance. That's just, you just got more people, so you just got more revenue, even though it could have been performing worse, right? Mm -hmm. And we have a couple of those, which we will actually show. This uh, first facility we're looking at, everybody. This is a facility that we bought year and a half ago, basically, right? Uh, the summer, right when, before everything went down. Rates had already started to go down. But in that time, the market had dipped down by 25%. And as of right now, we are up 28%. And um, we're just going through our first revisions of um, our revenue and our revenue maximization. So this, we're, this guys is taken from today, meaning that we are in the slow season. So vacancies are high and we're discounting rates right now. This number will be wildly different come spring during the busy season, right? And I'm excited to follow up and show how much more we were able to do and what the outcome was of that. But the spread here is a positive good spread of 53%. The next thing that um, we are looking at is another facility that's actually in close proximity to this one, but we did not get the uplift in revenue, and that's largely due to the fact that we actually dropped majorly in occupancy. The reason being is we dropped almost 20% in occupancy because we had to kick out a lot of our tenants because we had to redo ceiling and pavement and all sorts of stuff. So even by losing probably 15% uh, uh, net occupancy going down, we were still up in revenue by 13%. Um, the market change there was 23%. So that's a 36% spread, even with dropping occupancy. What that tells me is once again, when I'm looking at performance, what's working and what's not. First of all, we already look at this and say, okay, we know where we need to improve and what we need to do better on. Obviously the occupancy kicking out, that was good because now we can actually charge higher prices for the people that come in. Um, but that is bringing down largely that revenue uplift that um, we're looking for. Uh, so just so people know, we are targeting almost always a 30 plus percent increase in revenue. Now, 
let's go to this one. This is a small facility. And um, to be honest, you guys, this is a rough one. Uh, our, our spread is a 40% spread. The market went down 22% and we're up in that two year period, 17%. And that's not something we're happy with at all. Um, this one's one that shouldn't have been up 17%. Uh, frankly, it should have been doubled. Now, the reason being is the occupancy is low. We had huge CapEx that we had to do on this one. Now, this is one by next summer. Um, it is 100% expected that that revenue increase is over 50% by next summer. Uh, so we're, we're it, it, the, these numbers are good from the marketplace and everything, but it's not good at all in where it actually should be. So once again, it's not, it's not doing worse, it's doing better, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's doing good to us. Um, all right, okay, so this facility, um, it's actually about 45 minutes from the last one that we just looked at. Now, this one, the marketplace is down 14%, and the revenue change is up 41%, that's a 55% spread. Uh, this one is good. We're very, very, very pleased with this one. The execution of it, we had to first fill up a little, but then we vastly changed rates and we lost occupancy. Um, and we're trying to do some further expansions, but we've got another whole round of rate increases on this one, which were how much? I was going to say, this doesn't even include, I mean, we're going to be adding, uh, I mean, off the top of my head, we're going to be adding another 6,000 plus a month in and revenue. The, the total revenue is 20. 4,000 so, right now. So, yeah. I mean, we, we will be, be about 60% revenue increase here by December. And or, that's a excuse massive. Me, by January, February. And, and just like the other facility, this is a massive impact on this facility given the fact that it is a smaller facility as well. Yes. So, Huge. it has a massive impact. I mean, we're talking about the change on this one facility. We bought this facility and the facility we showed before, we bought them together. And this one facility, the net income will almost be more than the gross income of both of them combined when we bought them. So um, that's really good. That's what we want to see. Yeah, that one's exciting. A lot of meat on yes. the bone still there. Yeah, a lot of meat on the bone still. This has a lot of room to go up. Um, it, these two were very hard because they were in such bad shape. And so it took us a long time to really do that. And it was also when the market rates were dropping and, and collapsing, but we're there with these things. We got this next busy season, um, we will be looking at either a total refi or we will be looking at probably a sell if we can't get the equity because the equity creation on this is so big. We normally don't ever want to sell, but equity to income is something we look at and this, this one will be very off because there's a lot of equity creation. All right, this next one we're, we're looking at here. Um, we have a 36% spread. So it's up 22% and down 14%. Uh, once again, that is um, good on the fact that the revenue is going up and rising. We're, we're, we're pleased with that um, because this one was full. So it's lower occupancy than where we bought it at. Revenue's up. But this one, we have an, an expansion coming on it. And the expansion on this, we're estimating to be what was it a month that we were talking about on the expansion on this? It was, it was huge. I can't remember this one off the top of my head, uh, but we've got 60 something parking spaces going in that we're getting yeah. getting in there, uh, doing some smaller expansions with uh, just striping some existing areas, some of that, again, just maximizing that gross potential revenue. Yes. Um, and, and again, the, the impact that it has on these facilities, especially like this one, another one off where this one's not a huge facility either. It's kind of an interesting one. You know, we've got one on one side of the road and a piece of the facility on one side of the road and the other on the other side of the road. Um, so it's an interesting facility, but all said and done, it's a great facility built really well. Uh, but there's just so much more gross potential revenue to be had here. And uh, to it'll further three X the that net. spread. Oh yeah, I for mean, sure. It'll, it'll three, because yeah. you guys got to remember in expansions. So Connor's d going through, they're building out the expansion, then they're going to fill it up. But when they fill that up, our, our expenses are, are fixed already because we bought it off that expense load. So everything we yield from this expansion, which is low CapEx ex expansion. So you're, I mean, we're talking over well over $100,000, probably over $150,000 to the net. Um, so it will over 
Yeah, I mean, once again, we're talking probably we're estimating 3x the net, which then also creates uh, obviously a lot of equity that we need to do. It, this stuff, though, takes time. So our investors in these lots of times, they've gone two years and we haven't given distributions on some of them. Why? Because we are pumping up revenue and equity and we are either adding things or we're, we're repairing roofs, right? So it's a heavier upfront and then that that yield on the back. That's that's what we do. We're value added. I was going to say, man, this is, is what it. we do. Yep. This is value add. All right, everybody. Super exciting news. We have got a brand new service that we're offering right in house here at Cedar Creek Capital, which is our architectural services. We have a in house architect now who is specifically here to help you build and design your facilities in the most efficient way. Follow the link below in the show notes. Get in touch with us, and our in house architect can start working with you today. Maybe you're buying your first facility, maybe you're a seasoned veteran, whatever that might be, you're going to need property management software, and that's where Tenant Inc. comes in. I'm telling you guys, this technology has been developed by self-storage owners and operators just like us, and it is one of the most robust and usable and actionable and valuable tools in regards to property management that you could ever utilize or find in the technology realm and all things self-storage. So, be sure check out Tenant Inc. Link is in the show notes. Um, now this one, th these we had two of these that were together that I, you know, they're they're good. The overall market rate is down 12. They're up 18 percent. That's a 30 percent spread. Revenues up, uh, you know, 18 percent. That that's that's good. It's nothing that I would say that we're like writing home about, we've still got a lot of work. It's not where we want them to be. Mm -hmm. This um, one's an interesting one too, just given the unit type. It's very specific there uh, with just a lot of larger units. So there's not as much diversity and ability to uh, to affect rates and manage rates. Uh, yes. It's a little bit more subject to what we're seeing in that market. It, that's a really good point. Um, the, the, the closer that First of all, you are more subject to the market rate the closer you pair up and concentration of individual units. You are also more subject to the market. If you're coming out on a development, um, you have to fill up at market prices, then try to scale up from there. So we have the in-place revenue and we can play with to try to push it. And even when we're filling up with new people, we can offset. There's, there's just more tools that we can play with that. But some of them are more sensitive by nature of unit mix than others. Um, all right, this one, um, once again, this is a 28 spread, negative 13% on the market and 16%. Now, I, I also should make it clear that like this one, for an example, um, the overall market change is 13%, but that isn't nearly as reflective of this facility. It's way bigger. The reason being is the select units we have at this facility this average market rate, which we're taking from all units, which by the way, probably should have stated this at first, but all units in every one of our markets went down. Every single one, Some somewhere between 10 to 50% in every single one of the markets. This is taking all the units and taking blended average. So the average market change is 13% in our three to four mile radius. Now, in on facilities like this, the larger units that we had, which we had a large concentration of, were much, much more than 13% drop. Um, so some of these facilities, by the nature of the selection, actually were hit much harder. Um, and that is true with a lot of our facilities. We generally have facilities that have uh, bigger uh, units. Now, this one is a fill-up facility, and this one has been, I, I call it my problem child. Even though uh, market rates are down 20%, which that takes into account different types of units, our unit selection is much more than that. Climate controlled um, in this market facility was over 20% drop, and that was the largest driving factor of ours, we were able to increase revenue by 10%. It's a 29% spread, but um, don't let that fool you. This this one we do consider. Uh, I, I don't want to say a failure because it's not over. We're not we're not done with it. But to this point, we're not even close to where this this is not 
this isn't something we're not only happy about, we're disappointed in. And granted, there's lots of things we're doing, and this won't obviously remain the same, and the market conditions, but we just didn't feel like the other ones, we, we, we got it to where it not only needs to be, we, we just have it. It's, it's been a struggle and we have these guys, mm -hmm. we have these. Yeah, this uh, this is our one, out of all our portfolio, problem. this has been, been the one. <laughs> uh, it's, it, we're, we're happy to say that, that even the, when the problem, the, the revenue's up. So um, that's, but yeah, it's, it's my frustrating one. Now, this one, good one, negative 15%, and obviously a 24, we have a 39% spread. Um, uh, a good one chugging along. Once again, though, this is one that I think will be uh, vastly expanded during the next busy season. Um, this one right here, this is an interesting one, a much more stabilized facility. And this one has a negative, or excuse me, a 27% spread. But as you can see on this one, we only had a 5% increase. So the reason being for this is we have a unit mix problem here. Now, it also though is taken away, we had large gains in revenue prior. So um, this is an older stabilized facility, but still we have a occupancy problem at this facility because of a concentration of units. The concentration of units that we have were demolished in this market cycle. Uh, the vast majority of them are 10 by 20s and we have like, I don't know, 200 of them or something like that, a huge amount of those units. And those were the units that got hit um, really the hardest. Now, the revenue is vastly up from where we, where we bought it. Um, but this is one that when we look at that, if we had a fully occupied, stabilized, we've been pushing it and it was a 5% increase, we'd go, we're happy with that. Um, but on this one, uh, we, we do have those issues. So that revenue change uh, should be higher than that, and I think it will be. So as of next year coming in, we'll make up the changes, but we can probably push that revenue another 30%. Yeah. So um, the last one, this is a brand new one. This is the only reason this one's negative. We're moving people out, switching it around. Um, this is, hasn't even, like, we haven't even completed a full cycle on it or anything else. So its revenue is down um, but uh, by 6%, but once again, this is normal. When we buy it, we're moving people around and kicking people out a lot. So that's to be expected. If it hasn't even gone through a full cycle, it's hard to even put it at this point, but we put it in there because we're showing every all, all the facilities. All right, now we kind of walked through all these, a few things we want to talk and, and mention. Um, first of all, we, we try to be very transparent. I want to be transparent on our wins, our hits, our misses, how we are looking at our performance. And once again, most importantly, but how we are performing, meaning not the market. Uh, it's really important to focus on the things that you can change and get better at and improve those things incrementally and uh, be ruthless about it and not accept mediocrity. <laughs> not accept mediocrity. I can't even say it. I'm, you know, mediocrity. I, 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 mediocrity. <laughs> I'll get there, folks. Um, it's just, you know, I it has to be the best. I can't even say that low of a word. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So, uh, no, but uh, we, you know, guys, we, we really, um, I don't think a lot of people make those distinctions. Uh, oh, market's bad. Oh, this. And I, I don't like that because you're forfeiting, you're giving up. And that actually causes an excuse to not, focus and see what can be done to improve. And in market cycles like this, everyone, there is lots and lots of opportunities. And there's huge ways that you can get better. And in fact, this is what makes the difference. So our performance, we get, we get really good during this market cycle and we're getting better and better and better as markets turn, you explode. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't accept that the market is dragging us down and there's nothing that we can do. Uh, market rates are down, we're focusing on other things and we have to offset it. But uh, overall, um, once again, we only have one facility that is down, but that's not even a full year wrapped up facility. So we don't really count that, but all other ones, we are over market rates substantially. And we've been able to offset market rate drops. Um, and you have to remember, guys, uh, a lot of these we bought in, the last 
two, three years. So, I mean, the vast majority of them. So we're right being affected by it right there. Um, and we, I like to see these things because it shows, all right, great. We're, we're, we're improving things, getting better because we're increasing our gross revenue potential through our square foot, um, pushing that square foot revenue. So as things come back, it's like wind in the sails. Already though, in this environment, we have three that will be in a position next year to sell. We have so much equity in them. And we're doing that through down downward market, markets. That's what we look at to identify what we're doing right to accomplish that, to place on others. So that's kind of a look at our shared investor assets um, that we uh, have right now. Of course, we have our other side of the portfolio, which we don't have investors um, in. Those are just our private ones, which by the way, we don't do any more, any ones that are private. We don't cherry pick. Everything we do is with investors today. So we are, we call them legacy assets that we bought and owned prior to taking on investors. Um, we have all of those assets too. But it's uh, interesting to see not legacy and assets that first of all, weren't, these weren't assets that were perfect. These were turnaround facilities. They had issues, they had problems. And we are in the middle of a market contraction. And that's how, that's how we've turned out. It really is a good exercise, man. I was really excited to dive into this today, walk through and show, you know, what's working, what's not, where we're focused at, um, and be able to actually take a, take a high level view and see how are we performing in comparison to what we've been seeing. And again, I think it's a really good, a really good example of not just taking street rates at face value, being able to understand that you can drive revenues a little bit more outside of the street rates, right? Um, which I know a lot of people and even us, we base, you know, a lot of our underwriting on the street rates and how far we can push those and what that looks like. And so hopefully this gives people a really good amount of tools, you know, additional, additional tools in their toolbox, talking to partners and lenders and, and analyzing facilities. And um, I also love that you talked about not utilizing the markets as an excuse. Um, that is 100% our culture here. I've even had those conversations with our team uh, on the operations management, management side about, um, you know, it's, it's super easy to just say, oh, well, you know, market rates are down or this, you know, the, the staffing and employment market sucks and we can't do this, we can't do that. But it's the focus on what we can do. You know, exactly like what you said, can we expand? Can we increase potential revenue by doing this? Can we increase revenue by getting a little bit more strategic on rates or whatever that looks like? We're always looking for the answers and not focusing on the problems. Yeah, it, and for me, I'm, you know, I, you're exactly right. And I look at it and I'm like, it doesn't matter. The outcome matters. Mm -hmm. So let's focus on it. Let's get it done. Let's figure out how, what we can change and get to that outcome um, and what we can press on it. And, and, and I, there's, you know, yes, we don't have one market. Every single market we're in, every single market we showed you, uh, rates are down, occupancies down. Um, and in no way, shape or form do I believe that that means that we not only can't achieve what we set out to on every single asset, but that we are going to. There's, I, I, there's not even a question in my mind and we're not going to allow the market right, to dictate what we do. Now, obviously we can't control everything. So market will do what it is and we just have to do what we can do to offset it. And when, you, when you're thinking like that, um, it just, it opens up possibilities and doors. That's the same way on acquisitions. That's the same way on financial structuring. And it's why I think it, it is the separating factor of people that perform well in markets that aren't favorable and people that say, well, I can't invest because it's 8% interest mm -hmm. rates, right? Okay, well then I guess you can't. Well, you're, you're never so, going to. Yeah, because you're never if, going to. If you have an excuse today, you're gonna have one tomorrow. There'll like, always period. be one, Yeah, 100%. Thanks everybody. Thanks guys.